Hi, I am excited today. My name is Dr. Scott Jensen, and I'm running to be the next governor in Minnesota. But I have with me Adriana and Matt Burke. We've got a problem. Our system's broken. Recent studies have indicated that fourth and eighth grade reading and arithmetic test scores in Mississippi demonstrate that they're moving in the right direction and we're moving in the wrong direction. It's time for change. We don't need to fund broken institutions. We need to fund kids. And that's why I'm so excited about Matt and Adriana joining us. Matt, would you just tell us a little bit about you and, and your passion for education? Yeah, well, I'm just an aw-shucks kid from St. Paul, Minnesota. And education played a huge role in my life growing up. Uh, obviously, actually had a great impact on my athletic career as well. Was able to go to a great college, but also then play professional football for 15 years. And so I know firsthand the importance of an education in somebody's life. And it's, it's really the key to professional success. Um, it can be the key to lifting uh, somebody, a generation, out of poverty. And we have, my wife and I are blessed with eight children. And we know uh, how complicated education can be. And really, I think our feeling is that the way that we're educating children today in 2021, uh, it's antiquated. It really doesn't work as well as it used to. And there needs to be some changes. Adriana, you've been married almost 20 years. And so you've had a chance to guide and shepherd eight children as you try to help them, if you will, hit their stride. Yeah. What have you learned and what's your passion in regards to how to impact on your kids? Well, my kids are one of my passions, of course, and family. Um, I guess I've learned that we did homeschool for a little, a little while, and I felt like everything I could accomplish in that short time was um, amazing. So I just was like, all this time we can spend short time doing schoolwork, we could do learn other things. So we did cooking and other things like that to make, um, you know, just for fun. You'd mentioned Real World Wednesday. Yes. What's that like? Right. <laughs> so at Unity, we have Real World Wednesdays, and it is. Um, basically a day where the kids come to school, there's no formal learning. They change tires, they cook, they um, have speakers come out from outside to give them lots of knowledge on Work money power and tools. power tools. Yep, they do it all, so. I remember when I was in Sleepy Eye High School, I remember we thought that we needed more practical education. We didn't know how to do a checkbook, change tires, things checkbook. like that. I think you can do it all if you do it efficiently, and that's sort of what you're saying. Exactly. Yep, yeah, exactly. And I would say I think that those kind of skills are actually more important today because kids are getting less and less of that at home. You know, really the focus of education as a whole is, is so focused on the test. Mm -hmm. And there's this, I think there's this mm -hmm. prevailing idea that every kid should go to college. Every kid should not go to college. Amen. I was built for the system. It was easy for me to read and memorize and regurgitate information. You know, when I went to school, we lived in the knowledge economy. Uh, so I was built for the system for college. Not all kids are built like that. And I think we're seeing that less and less kids should actually be going to college with the financial costs that families incur and, uh, and the debt. But I also think that um, we, need to, we need to update the way that we teach our kids or the skills because memorizing facts is really kind of a worthless skill nowadays. We all have supercomputers in our pockets. So we should work on things that kids actually need that they're not getting. And a lot of that has to do with interpersonal relationships, uh, with creativity, uh, social emotional intelligence. Well, you know, to that point, too, I would say that that group of 20 to 25 year olds I see in the office who are frequently most stressed, most frustrated, most anxious, looking for an answer that they haven't come across are frequently kids that chose to go to college and after two years, they weren't any closer to having any significant life answers. They had a chunk of debt built up. They felt they, they'd let their parents down and they say, what do I do? And it might sound dramatic, but that's when kids think about, do I even belong here? Mm -hmm. When they start thinking that way, we got a problem. Well, we've the highest levels in young people of, of uh, depression, anxiety, and suicide ideation right now. You know, why is that? There's probably multiple reasons, but one is we put this idea out there that you need to go to college and if you don't go to college somehow you're less than I mean here at Unity High School we feel like whether you go to college you go into the trades you go into the military you go to the religious life there's equal dignity in all of those things right. and I think that's how we need to approach our children it's interesting the common denominator that has emerged pretty quickly in our conversation is the kids 
and that one size doesn't fit all and that there's a lot of things we could be doing differently. That's why our campaign team is so excited that Matt and Adriana have been willing to come on board and serve as our honorary campaign chairman and chairwoman. These two people are going to help guide our thinking in terms of what kind of creative solutions can we come forward to make things better. We know that homeschools do well. We know that charter schools bring innovation. We know that private schools have literally stayed open throughout this whole COVID pandemic. And they did it in a way that was responsible, safe, health freedom, choice for parents were all honored. And you succeeded. You succeeded at a level to where you are going to open doors for parents thinking that haven't been opened before. Matt, could you just comment on how efficient is a school like Unity High School, maybe compared to a more traditional, conventional setting, K through 12 public school? Yeah. Well, our tuition here at Unity High School is $6,700 a year. $6,700. Private school, $6,700, no state aid. Uh, basically have to do everything ourselves. You know, we can't tap into any type of system that already exists out there. And our model works. It costs us $6,700 to educate a student here at Unity. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, you know, there's, there, there's, a, <laughs> there's certainly efficiencies to be had in the system. I think you just, you always need to go back and say, you know, what's the goal? What's important? What do we need to have? And then what's a nice to have, right? Adriana, it almost sounds like you and Matt have sort of embarked on creating a small business. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you actually figure out what your revenues will be, what your expenses are going to be, and you say, we'll make it work. And if we have a little extra revenue, maybe we can add something next year. What are your thoughts? Right, exactly. I think that he, I think he's on to something for sure. Yep. He probably um, learned it from you. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Definitely learned it from me. I think, you know, it's kind of like amazing what you can do when you have to do it, right right like 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 when you know like failure is kind of not an option like yeah. you start a school and you're like okay families are going to send their kids here they're entrusting you to educate their kid and fulfill the mission that you've put forth so you have to make it work um you just you just have to do it right so, so you're held accountable and you can you can do it i think you're right matt i think when we can start looking at alternatives and say that we're not going to put everybody into the same little cookie cutter, cookie cutter right. approach we will find success where we might not have anticipated finding it. Okay. We'll probably find kids doing stuff that they didn't even know they could do. Yeah. You and I talked a little while ago about education and the whole concept of each kid is unique and they learn differently. Yeah. I know that as a family doc, I'm struck by my own shortcomings that I don't have the ability in a 15 minute office visit to necessarily identify for Johnny or Janie what challenges they might have, whether we're talking about reading difficulties, whether we're talking about hearing difficulties. It, it, it might even be issues of how to socially interact, and it might even bleed into the whole concept of, is there a, an element of autism here? Mm -hmm. I just am so struck by the need to, we really need to connect parents with the teachers, because mm -hmm. that alliance can really open up a kid's world. And if we don't have that going for us, oftentimes the kid is the one that suffers. We actually came across that problem when um, our daughter was in like middle school. She was like, I just can't get it, I'm struggling. And so we brought her in and the doctor said, yeah, I think maybe she has dyslexia. And um, just not knowing anything about it, we really struggled to find a school that she fit into that understood dyslexia. And um, so yeah, you know, I think that's why it's so important to have choice with school because it, not everything fits every child, and yeah. we learn that that way. Yeah, I also think it is very important. Um, I think more schools, different types of schools, mm -hmm. is important, you know, right? We're all, we're all, <laughs> we all have so much potential in certain ways. You know, some, I mean, some, some of us have huge, <laughs> say some friends are big brain people, you know, right. others aren't so much. We focus so much on just like, we look at kids as like vessels, and if we can just dump a bunch of information and knowledge and stuff in them, you know, somehow it's going to be okay. They, you know, they can only they can only absorb so much an individual child. What we also need to look at is what can we do around the child to help them thrive. And what's the number one determining factor is a kid needs to feel loved and safe by adults. Hopefully, they're getting that at home. They might not be. 
And teachers can fill that void and administrators and counselors and those things. But you can't do it if you've got a school of 1,000 kids or 1,500 right. kids or 2,000 kids. So more schools, different types of schools, smaller schools. So kids are, they're all known, not just the kids known by name, but what you'd like to hopefully someday Same. is their names, but the, everybody, the, the school knows the families. Right. They know all the dynamics going on. And then you can best serve that kid. Now that's interesting. You're describing problems with education because we've sort of gone in lockstep. We've got the same challenges in healthcare. And you're right, Matt, not everybody flourishes in our conventional Western medical system where the bigger the system, the more things they have to offer. That doesn't always pan out. A lot of times, the bigger the system, the more lost mm -hmm. in the system the patient feels. Mm -hmm. The patient may not be real good at filling out forms. They, they might not like computers. and They might not be real adept at doing an iPad application I think of some of the patients that I take care of and they definitely do better not with pills but maybe seeing an acupuncturist or a nutritionist or connect with a life coach a lot of times physical therapy does wonders when my inclination might have been just to write out a prescription mm -hmm. so it's almost like we've got parallel problems I mean we're sitting here with in healthcare doctors and hospitals and administrators and insurance companies and the whole complex of medicine is pushing patients this way and they're saying I don't fit there and you're saying same thing in education well you know I, like Unity High School I don't think this this isn't the school for everybody no. but it is it is the school for anybody mm -hmm. but we saw a need this is a this is a different type of school there was an area that in my opinion needed a Catholic high school given the number of Catholic grade schools around and we said hey there can there we're not professional education. we have no training in opening schools none but I know, and I know our families would tell you that, that we're filling a need, you know, and that's, and that's what we do. And so you're filling a need. You're, you're helping the problem. We knew something had to be done, Scott. So I'm going to challenge Adrienne on this next question because here's what happened. Two people saw a need and said, we're going to roll up our sleeves and do something about it. We may not be experts in it, but by George, we're going to do it. And you took a risk. I mean, you plowed a tremendous amount of energy and resources into it, and here you are. Can you go back, Adriana, and just share with us a little bit of what that felt like for you and Matt to be sitting home at night, getting up in the morning, talking about this dream, and wondering, how do we go forward? Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> I have to give all the credit to my husband, because he came home and said, I'm going to start a high school. And I said, you are? We have eight kids. Um, but I'm very <laughs> thankful that he, you know, there was a plan, and um, you know, basically it took a lot of, a lot of, you know, contemplating. Like, is this right? But we knew there was a need, and we felt like no matter what we did, we had to get it accomplished. So he, I have to say, he did most of the work, but no. I stood behind him as no, a cheerleader. No, no, I mean, <laughs> you, did. you have this crazy idea, and you, know, you right. don't know. You don't even know what you even know what the process looks like. So you just brainstorming and throwing stuff out there. You pray a lot right. about it, yeah. and I'll tell you what, I mean, the amazing thing here is that God sent the right people. You know, right. it's, it's yeah. incredible how it's all come, come into place here at, at Unity, and so, um, and I hope, you know, what we're doing here, we take a different approach to education, a little bit different. It's not radically different, but the system needs a tweak. Right. I mean, you look at whether you want to use test scores or kids' mental health or whatever metric you want to use, we all can agree that it's not working as well as it should. Mm -hmm. So we've tweaked the model and you know, we do it not just for our families, but for anybody in education. You know, we're an open book. Come look at what we're doing. We share best practices. We're outsiders. Sometimes great solutions come from people outside of a certain industry, right? Because we have a different perspective. We don't have any preconceived notions of how things have to be. Mm -hmm. um, and you just, you just, you know, you do the best you can with what you have where you are. And I know everybody's trying to do that. And the great thing about this, this problem of education is that nobody's opposed to improving the education of our kids, right? Yeah. Students aren't, families aren't, teachers aren't, citizens aren't. Nobody's opposed to it, right? Mm -hmm. So if we, I mean, this is a 100% issue. Everybody wants to make it better. We might not totally agree on how to do it, but I think we would all agree that this is important and, and, and we want to make it better. So let's just, let's put everything on the table Let's put all ideas and, and types of schools and philosophies and theories, and, and, let's, and let's figure out what's best. And I think we can all, we'd all probably agree at the end that 
different types of schools is probably what's best because there's different types of kids. Mm -hmm. More than 40% of the Minnesota biennial general fund balance budget goes to education. And you're right, Matt. We have preconceived notions that it's so difficult to break them open and do something different. And we need to. I think that every Minnesotan that gets to know Adriana and Matt Burke will understand clearly why when I decided to run for governor, I wanted them helping lead the thought, lead our campaign, help us break it apart and say we're not going to try a one-size-fits-all approach when it comes to education. We need outsiders. We need people saying, how can we do it differently? How can we tailor what the kid needs and give them that? Matt mentioned college isn't for everybody, and it isn't. I mean, there's a lot of folks I take care of that college was a really good fit when they were 40 years old, but at the age of 18, it wasn't. Yeah. Preconceived notions, that's one of the worst things that happens to us in politics. When we can start to break away from preconceived notions, we start to get real answers. That's why I'm so appreciative and so thankful that you're going to be the chairs of our campaign. You're going to give us the wisdom that you've got. And you've got to have some wisdom if you've got eight kids and you're still alive. <laughs> I mean, that's tough work. I don't know when you sleep. <laughs> I don't know when you sleep. But thank you both so much. Thank you. Our pleasure. Yeah. yeah.